Glaciations in the Alps. Alps are the most studied mountains on our planet right now. However, they still bear a lot of secrets. Only recently scientists start understand how the mountains were formed, how they were glaciated and shaped through recent geological history. In this video we will look at the recently published research paper about modeling last glacial cycle ice dynamics in the Alps. This video will be based on published by author's video in YouTube where they show the simulation which they performed and we'll talk about that and in reference how they reconstructed it and we'll look at this to understand what's happening in the European Alps in the last glacial maximum. If you ever travel through the European Alps, you see a lot of evidence of glaciations there. The studies of glaciers started in European Alps too, because the pioneers glacial studies started there. One of the famous scientists, Louis Agassiz, was one of the pioneers who understood that we can read the landscape, the remnants of the glaciers, and looked into the past and see what's happened with this valley in the past and where the ice were before. In this study, scientists used that. So we used the dated polish rocks, boulders that were brought by the glaciers, and also the topography all around, which has been studied by numerous scientists for the last 300 years. They use that as the basis. They use the topography, the modern topography of the Alps to fill it with the ice. And they use the climate models to change the temperature on the planet and see what will happen with the ice in those valleys. How does it work? In particular, in this research, they used uh, the called Parallel Ice Sheet Model, PISM, and they model the last 120 southern years, so basically the last maximum glaciation that happened on our planet. They use horizontal resolution of two and one kilometer. They use some bases to reconstruct the climate, so they use the climate forcing using present day climate and the time dependent temperature offsets from multiple paleoclimate proxies. They use this marine oxygen isotope data that we have from the ice cores and they reconstruct it up to stages 4, 2 and recent ones. Read this paper online where they describe in particular how, what models to use and how they run it. But briefly, to just understand, a lot of scientists right now are using these reconstruction models so they can change something, for example, increase the temperature and see what's happened with glaciers right now, or they can reduce the temperature and they see what will happen with the ice. So the ice will grow in and accumulate it on the tops of the mountains and they will grow the glaciers. So they use the glacier parameters, which we have right now. They use the past glacier remnants. For example, we know several kilometers down the valley, the glacier was there last time, 4,000 years ago or so. It's like example, and they run the temperature from today back into that day, and they see how much we need to reduce the temperature to get the glacier there. O opposite, they run the temperature. If we we'll reduce it, for example, by 4 degrees, what will happen with the ice with that glacier? So that's how it works. However, there's a lot of components in those models. They're not as simple. And the modern computers allow us to put all these complications and run it. First of all, we need very good topographical landscape map where we can run it with our resolution. And the modern technologies allow us to have it. It's all stored in computers and we can run with topography. Then we have data on the climate. And we need to understand uh, how glaciers work. So we understand ablation, it's where the glacier actually melting, all the surface area and how it changes with time with glacier growing or retreating. And we have this area where they actually ice accumulated. So we have this balance included in the model. And we also need to include what will happen with the glacier when it's come down to the narrow valley or open valley, what will happen at the base of the glacier, some glaciers sliding. So they start putting all these components. And in the paper they describe what they did for particular these European Alps. Of course, of course, you need to understand 
it's not precise and it's not going to give you correct result, but it gives you a rough estimate. And those scientists, they go and check it with the data we already have, recorded data. So in the paper, there's an interesting introduction about the studies done in the European Alps, how the glaciation affected the sea level change and so on. And they also highlighted the main questions that this paper addressed in particular. For example, what climate evolution led to the non-maximum ice limits? To what extent ice flows was controlled by subglacial topography? That's what we just talked about. What drove the different responses of individual low? Glaciers we see right now in the Alps, they all just uh, occupy particular valleys, but then when they start growing, these valleys, like a river, streams coming into the one big valley, the bigger valleys combine into the bigger one, like a tree trunks, and as a result, they all come out in the big valleys. And if you look on the map of the European Alps, you see that on the exits of majority of the valleys, we have right now those remnant lakes, big lakes, some were smaller, which were those places where the glacier tongue was sitting in the maximum extent, and the proglacial lake formed uh, during or after the glacier retreated. Uh, something what we observe, for example, in Southern Alps. I have in particular the video about that. So they argue here, we don't know how the particular lobes respond, because they, some of them respond in one way to the climate, forcing or, or changes, and other in different ways. So why? And so on. It will be very individual for each of the valley, and uh, it depends where the source of the ice, what the exposition of the slopes, how steep the valley, how narrow, how wide, and so on. How much precipitation, or it's more continental climate, the more you go to the east, and so on. Also, they uh, ask a question, we don't know how far above the trim line, where the ice surface is located. So the ice surface is actually particular the ice uh, level or of the glacier. And the trim line, it's these lines on the sides of the valleys, which plugged by the actual ice when it sits in the valley for some time, because the ice is constantly moving in the valley. And it's uh, kind of polishing off and creating this trim line on the sides. And another question, very important, how many advances occurred during the last glacial cycle? And this particular simulation showed that it's, it's very complicated. Let's have a look. So they have this absolutely amazing video they made, and you can watch it on YouTube. It's about two and a half minutes length. And they are just showing briefly what they did. We will look at this in a little bit more detail. So they start the video by zooming into our Alps. Of course, they're not showing everything here, but just in particular valleys that they study. You can imagine it was a little bit tricky to simulate it for all of them. And we start our simulation. You can see at the bottom we have the graph. We will show you what's happening. We have 120,000 years time limit. And we start from 120,000 years ago. And they noted there that the climate was particular, similar that we have right now. So if you're in particular worried about the climate we have right now, that it's very hot, uh, it's not as hot as it was in the whole history of our planet. The also, this bottom um, graph will show us the time running through, and it will show us the temperature change, and it will show us the ice volume change. And they say it's centimeters at the sea level equivalent. You will see the black and the blue graphs, and the black will be the temperature and will drop towards our maximum glaciation. It's about 25, 20,000 years ago, and then uh, we will see the blue line is this ice volume. So the colder there are, the more ice, the ice volume will increase, and then when it starts melting, it will reduce. So the graphs will kind of mirror each other. That's what we would ex expect. We see our uh, beautiful valleys. You see a very interesting geological, uh, almost uh, striking through like avenues, big valleys. And we have those big valleys opening into these lakes, um, very famous all around the northern side of the European Alps and south as well. So we start with the ice cap just around the highest point of our mountains. And then we see how they start running it. You can see constantly, repeatedly growing ice down and up, down and up the valleys. And uh, that's exactly what they're saying, how many times the advances happened. And it sounds like a lot. So I'm only on about 10,000 years and I already have so many 
fluctuations and then we see there's a new ice caps appearing and appearing while the temperature is dropping so right now I'm on a one degree just drop and we see how much more uh, ice caps appeared in glaciers let's see what's happened further now we're going towards three four degrees the ice volume doesn't change as much so far however we see much more uh, bigger ice caps appearing joined together and the main valleys are still empty but the sun bigger lobes already going down into those valleys in particular the biggest glaciers right now that we observe in the alps some of the bigger glaciers already reached down the biggest valleys and occupied them especially you can see here to the east we're already five degrees below seven seven eight you can see they will start picking up the ice volume the moment we reached minus eight or ten degrees and majority of the valley are occupied by ice and even some of them reaching the uh, lakes uh, that are north from these valleys and then we have slight increase in temperature again my minus five degrees here and again the valleys open up however the big transverse valleys are occupied right now by the ice by these blue lines you can see this when the smaller glaciers as the tributaries flows into the one bigger ice in the valley and the moment this happened there has there will be different response of those ones so let's continue watching so about 100,000 years ago we have this uh, between 5 and 8 now we're about 6 and 7 degrees changes and you can see what's happening with the Alps it's not as dramatic so far but there's a constant like a pulses flows of the ice slopes down the valleys and up down and up look now we're going to the cold period 86 87 years ago and we see that some of the ice lobes are reaching the lakes in particular Geneva Lake now we have again fluctuations and now we have bigger pulses of the ice so much more ice now and you can see it works as the feedback so we already have so much ice cap high albedo and these uh, glaciers take faster now to grow down the valleys even some mountain ranges right now on the 65 seven years ago outside of the alps are getting some snow caps and you can see for example with the zurich and towards the munich specifically to the north there's a little bit different situation towards the modern italy you see that those uh, valleys are not yet occupied and uh, the famous italian lakes are not occupied by ice yet uh, now we have this dance of much cooler temperatures and a lot of pulses of ice going down the valleys however you can note how every time the temperature rising up again towards seven or eight degrees uh, how dramatically the glacier retreat now we're going towards 30,000 years and we see that the majority of the Geneva Lake is covered with the ice similar situation burn under the ice towards the Zurich and other lakes now the ice creeping down towards the lakes towards in the south direction towards the Italy and in particular around the Turina in the western part of the Alps the southern slopes are opening up towards the Italian plains situation towards the Austria modern Austria there's a, all the valleys are occupied by the ice and the old joint and the big lobes floating out north eastern to the south now we're reaching towards 25,000 years ago we have the maximum uh, getting towards the maximum of the ice and we're seeing that we see the, uh, the maximum temperature decrease 13 degrees or so 13 14 even though 25 southern now you see you are in the maximum extent of the ice right now and those lobes that were coming out you see on towards the north they even start joining in together and then from about 20 southern we see the retreat of the ice and from about 80 southern it starts getting dramatic so i'm on the 16 and a half southern years ago and i can see that very fast within the southern of years the ice all retreated right now about 13 southern 
there's not much <laughs> glaciers left we have see some fluctuation and that's the moment when the sea uh, level start increasing dramatically uh, it's creeping towards the Venice you can see Genoa to the south Nice and so on and now we in our last several thousand years Holocene basically uh, I have a video about that and you can see the modern situation and that's it that's what I wanted to show you and just talk through so you can read the paper and see what's how they simulated it and we see what's happened with the European Alps it's interesting that many people think that when there was the last glacier maximum 25 20,000 years ago before for for example 30,000 40,000 we have this all other stages but before there was like no ice and then ice and then no ice come kind of like we have right now but it's interesting that this shows that actually what we have right now that stage of the glaciation was about 120,000 years ago time period the last 100,000 years we have a lot of ice and although the temperatures was coming up slightly and the didn't differ so much from the modern temperature not dramatically I would say but we still have a lot of ice and ice caps sitting there on the mountains also interesting uh, with European Alps that uh, when you think about northern hemisphere glaciation and particularly in Europe we all remember of course the big Finnascandian ice cap that's sitting there over the Scandinavia which all originated from the Norwegian mountains and it's going down through the Baltic towards the northern Germany, northern France, towards the Baltic states to the east and basically there was no Baltic Sea that time, it was all covered uh, in the ice, under the ice and the boulders, the material which you can see right now in the northern Germany, northern Poland countries to the east of the Baltic like Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, Russia and so on we see the material that brought there from Scandinavia, from Norway, from Sweden and in particular some boulders being brought from Norwegian mountains and it's amazing so they travel it on the top of the ice or within the ice through the, all the Baltic from the Norway and were deposited there however when I'm thinking about last glacier maximum you would think oh the whole Europe must be under the ice no the European Alps would have their own glaciation and we just witnessed this uh, how it's approximately happened and we have this glaciation around Scandinavia but in particular in 120,000 years we can see they never joined together so there was always some piece of land in between which was different climate different vegetation at the time cold um, type of climate then vegetation a lot of water coming from the glaciers from the north from Scandinavian ice sheet and from the European Alps however there was land and you could travel there <laughs> animals and people so that's an interesting point to take from this video too. We'll talk about Scandinavian ice sheet as well and how it behaved. And it's very amazing, it's different than that one in European Alps. European Alps very steep mountains with narrow valleys and very sensitive glaciers. You can see how they're pulsating all the time. And in the paper, in the results, uh, they noted that there was a multiple uh, numerous red advances of those glaciers. And that's what we are witnessing right now everywhere around the planet where we have high mountains similar happening in southern alps of new zealand it's kind of interesting alps that could be compared to the european alps with the behavior i hope you enjoyed that video and it gives you some understanding of how glaciation happened on our planet and happening right now and i hope you can like my video, subscribe and share it with anyone you think might be interested.